the first week of Chicago Bulls basketball is done. And we capped it off tonight with our first victory of the year against the Warriors. Um, that was a big game for us. Um, your boy might have put some money. You, you, you know we got to we gotta indulge in some trash talk, especially when we got some fans over on Twitter. Um, shout out to Alex um, Thomas over there um, on Twitter. Um, make sure you go follow him. Um, his net or his um Twitter handle is going to be in the description below. I lost ten dollars to him today. I got a little overconfident in in Patrick Williams. Now Patrick Williams did score more than his rookie Danny Avija, um, but Danny had some steals. Danny didn't miss as many shots, and Danny had more fantasy points. So I lost. I had I had to give up ten dollars, but it doesn't matter. I lost the battle. But I still won the war. Yes. You, you see it on the chest. Bulls. We picked up the dub. We picked up the dub. Now, as for earlier this week. Eh. Eh. Last seven days as the Bulls fans have been a little iffy. Going into tonight, we were 0-3. We should have been 1-2. and um, But Damian Lee hit a game winner against us. And even... Though the league two minute um, officiating recap or whatever said that they missed calls, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We lost the game. It doesn't matter. They can't change the results. That's not something we have to worry about. We lost. Damian Lee hit the game winner. That's simple. He hit the game winner. He did that shot. Whether there's a foul or not, it doesn't matter. He hit the shot. He hit the shot. So we lost that game. Um, I really liked what we did that game. I liked a lot of the effort. Um, we even contested Damian Lee fairly well. We didn't let Curry beat us. We let Damian Lee beat us. We did what we had to do. We didn't let them touch, let Curry get the ball in his hands. We got we let we we forced them to get it into the hands of somebody that we necessarily thought they wouldn't trust. He made the shot. Whatever they won by one. They won by one. Unfortunately, but that was a, one of our better games in the first four. Um, the first two games. Oh boy. The first game is a game we don't want to talk about. That that travesty is long gone. The Pacers game looked good in the fourth quarter once we had the guys out there that weren't the starters when we had the guys that are going to be fighting for minutes. We had the Garrett Temples. We had the Otto Porters. We had the Denzel Valentines. We had Chandler Hutchinson. We had Archie Diacono. When we had those guys out there, they put up effort. They put up fight. We had Gafford out there. Everybody was fighting, and we came back and... Necessary. We didn't almost win, but we made the scoreboard look better because of what that what that second slash third group kind of did. Um, all those guys are guys that they haven't seen playing time in the other games. Denzel Valentine, he played in the Pacers game, hasn't played since. Didn't play in the Warriors game. Didn't play tonight. Just hasn't happened. Just hasn't happened for him. Gafford, he's been sparingly used. We used him a little bit more tonight, but so far he's been fairly used. We haven't seen any Luke Kennard. We haven't seen Cristiano Felicia. We haven't seen any of that. You got to earn your minutes here in Chicago now. And that Indiana game was a big example. You got the guys coming off the bench. They said, you know what? The, the starters, they're not hooping. We'll go do it for them. We're going to hoop. We want to play. And they got the time. They got the, they got the minutes they won. They won when they were in the game. Um, for each individual player, um, quickly, um, I really like what we're seeing at Lowry Marketing this year. Um, he didn't play in the second half. I don't think he might have played early in the second half. Um, tonight, we didn't see him much in the second half, if at all. I really don't remember if he started the third quarter or not. But he wasn't in towards the closing moments of this game, and that's partially because we ain't going into this game, we knew he was going to be day to day because he had the little ankle injury from last game. So. We were not necessarily, he had 19 minutes in this game, so nothing crazy out of him today. But the first three games, man, Lowry Markkinen, the Lowry Markkinen we saw last year, we thought, hey, maybe this ain't the guy. He erased all that doubt. Now Lowry Markkinen is probably one of the best players on the team. And they said he had the potential to be, he's just not there yet. He was forcing things last year. This guy, he's playing great basketball. He's hitting his threes when they're wide open. He's hitting some contested threes. He's saying, you know what? 
I can drive to the rim. He's not afraid to drive to the rim. So I really like what I've seen at Lowry. Um, he was a guy at the beginning of the year. I said, hey, he does what he does last year. We had no business having him on our team. We can trade him. I don't want to see Lowry Markin traded now. He's played out of his mind. He's played out of his mind. Um, same thing with Otto Porter. Yes, he has a $27.5 million contract or something along those lines. Yes, he's being overpaid, but the man's out there. He's playing defense. He had a good defensive outing today. He has, he's been hitting threes this season. He's been hitting those mid-range shots. He's been he's been an energizer off the bench. He's been the big scorer off the bench. He's the only guy off the bench, really, that is much of a scoring threat. <clears throat> Hutchinson comes in there. Temple comes in there. Whatever. Not much is getting around. We're not going to do too much scoring. I mean, Temple had a couple threes. Might get maybe 10, 12 points out of here or there. But Otto's been able to put in the 10s consistently. Off the bench, he's really nice. He's really nice. I really like what I'm saying out of Otto. Do I think he's overpaid? Absolutely. But do I want him traded? Absolutely not. He's playing He's playing out of his mind, too. He's playing out of his mind. Wendell. He struggled the first two games. I thought, hey, last year I was really proud of you. I, I really liked what you were doing. And you were struggling. I'm like... So we can't get Lowry and Wendell cooking at the same time. This is the problem. This is going to be the problem. Both our bigs can't feast. Both our bigs can't eat when they need to eat. Wendell said, you know what? Shut up about the shut up about the doubts. That Warriors game, boy took over. Today, he took over. He had two back-to-back double-doubles. Go feast on them, Wendell. Go feast on them. Eat your food. Let's go crazy, boy. Let's go. Had a big game. Playing good defense. You love to see it at a window. Kobe White, playing point guard now. He's been struggling. He's going to score. Kobe White, he's going to score. He's had to adjust. He's playing a position he's not used to playing, so he's had more turnovers. He's making not best necessarily the greatest decisions, but throughout the first four games, you can see the progression with him. You can see the progression, and each and every game is getting better. You love to see that. You love to see that. Zach, he's being Zach. He's going out there. He's getting his buckets. Not much else you can say about Zach. You know what Zach Levine brings to the table. He's a scorer. I'm not going to sit here and tell you Zach Levine's played out of his mind because we haven't really seen Zach put on the backpack yet. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a point this season where there's a game where Zach drops 40, 50. I'm sure that's going to happen, but we haven't seen that backpack yet. He did have 33 against the Warriors. He did put a, a good outing, but he really wasn't. Carrying the team by any means. It was more natural. It feels more natural this year. I feel like everybody's involved. Everything's cooking. These last two games have been beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, we're a one and three team, but I think we played good basketball. That's how the first two games first two games we didn't even know how to defend. Um that was our issue. That was our issue. But the last two, we're playing better defense. We're keeping it close. You love to see it. You love to see it if you're a Bulls fan. You love to see him. Um, and then we got the bench mob guys. Um, actually, you know what? We're not done with the. We're not done. Garrett Temple coming off the bench. Way to be a starter, or not a starter. Way to be a role player off the bench. He's getting a, a decent amount of minutes. He's coming out there. He's hitting his threes. Find some decent defense. Um, at times he necessarily isn't the best player on the court. Obviously, um, he's not the most athletic. Whatever. He's he's doing him. He's open. Sato. Shout out to Sato. Sato was quiet all night tonight. Then in the fourth quarter, boy popped off. Bravo, Sato. Go make your plays a point guard. Go get your assist. Let them threes come to you. Let them buckets come to you. Keep facilitating. That's what you do. That's what you do. We love to see it. We love to see it tonight, man. We love to see it. Let me get into the bench mob, guys. Denzel Valent. Chandler Hutchinson. Chandler Hutchinson's actually been more in the rotation. Um, he's gotten minutes. He's gotten maybe 10, 12 minutes a game. Um, Daniel Gaff, he's been somewhat in the rotation. Valentine's been lingering in the rotation. I mean, we haven't seen him the last two games, but he feels like he should be there. So, a lot of the bench guys, I think, are playing with chips on their shoulders. Valentine came in the game and looked great. Hutchinson has moments where he looks great. Gafford has moments where he looks great. The bench mob is ready when it needs to be. That's what we like to see. And then, don't even get me started by my rookie. My rookie. My rookie out there. Yes, I know, technically speaking to ESPN fantasy rules, he got outplayed by Denny. But my rookie's out there putting up 12, 
my rookie's out there playing some defense. My rookie's out there doing what he needs to do. My man put up five shot or five makes after ten attempts. We're not afraid to let our rookie shoot. If Washington wants their rookie to hit three threes and call it a night, he three for six, three for seven, whatever it might have been. Whatever. We got faith in our rookie. Our rookie can play both sides of the ball. We, if he's not scoring, guess what? It don't matter. Boy can go do other things. You know, Danny had a lot of steals, so technically, yeah, he can do other things too. But I'm proud of my boy. I'm glad we took Pat. Pat's been great. Pat's Pat's putting up good numbers, and you love to see it. Ten point three points going into this game. Put up twelve tonight. Only rises. Only rises. Keeping that double digits. He's been great. Been great. One of the better rookies this year. And a lot of people were clowning us. Um, our our rookie is the one that's not injured. Our rookie is the one that doesn't play 37.5 minutes and average 5.5 points. I think a quorum. Our, our guy puts up points. And he actually plays less minutes. You do the math. Uh, just just got to praise my boy. Um, But anyways, that's, that's all we really got for the week one of Chicago basketball. Um, I'll be back next week. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. We'll be... We'll be doing this more frequently. But week one recap here for the Chicago Bulls. You know what we do. Yeah, we're one and three. We're starting to pick it up. And as my boy Stacy King would say, give him the sriracha. Beep, beep. <laughs>